and welcome to another episode of the Filmmaker Studio. Today I'm lucky to have Paul Cram in studio with me. Paul is a successful actor here in the Twin Cities. He also travels out to many other states doing independent films and he seems to really enjoy it. I don't know what I'm I talking do. about. <laughs> but Paul, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Oh gosh. Um, hello everybody. Uh, I live, like you said, here in Minneapolis. Um, what to tell people about myself? I always, I always have a blank with this question. Um, I don't know, what do you want to know? <laughs> well, um, what got you started in the industry? Why did you pursue acting? What was that moment for you? For me, I got, I got my start doing like uh, theater, uh, as I think most actors do, you know, a lot of stuff in you know, grade school, junior high, high school. Um, actually, it was my mom that, that uh, she was kind of like, you know, I think that I think that some theater would be good for you, so you're not super shy and like introverted, and and I'm still a bit of an introvert, but um, but yeah, I, I it certainly I, doesn't seem like it, <laughs> <laughs> which is a good thing. Um, but yeah, no, I I, I I I have my introverted moments where I'm like, I need my my alone time, but um, but I'm digressing. Uh, that's it. Theater. I got mm -hmm. my start. And when I was about 16, 17, that age, you know, I was like, this is, I love this. Like, I love telling stories and I love, you know, being in front of people and telling stories. Um, whereas I might not love being in front of people, like, if I don't have a story to tell, I'd be right. like, oh, let me hide. Um, and I went to my mom and I was just like, I want to be an actor. And I, what I love is that her response was not like, no, don't do that. You need something else to do. Um, her response was, cool, how are you going to do it? Like, literally, and, and let, like, tell me how you're going to do it or sort of figure this out, you know, and let me know. And so I wound up going to the local library, which I'm a huge fan of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I remember walking out, like, I had a stack of books and, like, you know, <laughs> precariously <laughs> wandered out. And I got every book I could possibly get, anything that had anything to do about the industry of acting, and I even got novels that were written that that weren't like a how-to guide, mm -hmm. but were just, you know, I don't know. Some of them I was skimming through, and I was like, "This is a stupid, trashy <laughs> <laughs> romance novel about acting." Um, and that's where I started. You okay. know, I started to read as much as I possibly could and kind of educate myself about the industry. And then from there, um, started the arduous process of approaching, you know, agents mm -hmm. and casting directors here in the Twin Cities, uh, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, and being an actress too. Um, it can be tough. How did you handle that? How did you represent yourself? Did the books really help with that? You learned? The, well, there's two things. I mean, in my experience, like, studying and reading gives such a good, like, overall view of, like, this is what a casting director does, mm -hmm. this is an agent, you know. But everybody's experience is unique. Right. And I mean, I remember sit, like sitting across from an agent and, and, and the agent's like, are you anorexic? You know, and like going down a checklist of like different things, like you're really skinny and like we could maybe help you represent yourself here in this market if you, you know, put on muscle and like gained weight and like, you know, just like all Goodness. these different things. And I, I do remember sitting there being like, what? Do huh. I want to be part of this kind of community? <laughs> yeah, and and I just I do I remember I remember like trying to trying to t absorb that and then mm -hmm. all of those doubts and then oh my gosh, adolescence is hard enough as yeah. it is and just being like, huh. And I'm a guy mm -hmm. and like I think like guys have a way easier time in in many ways than women do mm -hmm. in this industry because yeah, it's about, you know, yeah, I'm getting commentary about how I physically am right. built. But it's, you know, at the end of the day, women are, are so much more like, what size are you and, right. and those types of things. And yeah, that was something that came into play for me. But I don't know, for myself, being a dude and being a guy, like some of that just washed off mm -hmm. the back of my back. Um, and it wasn't a big deal. Right. Um, and it was, but it, was, it really wasn't until... I started to get some feedback from casting directors because I had started to go to auditions mm -hmm. and things. And it was actually casting directors, not so much agents. Uh, it was casting directors that were like, we like you. 
you know, we dig whatever this is that is you. We dig this mm -hmm. kind of scrappy built guy. You know, you're not. You're not the typical. You're not quite typical. Mm -hmm. You're not. So it probably it has served me well that I'm not like this big muscle bound. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that or that or I would be, you know, the next Tom Cruise if I was. But um, even he's short. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's all the illusion of the camera. Yeah. So would you say, because the first response you get from a lot of people when you say you want to be an actor is, well, the business is just so cutthroat. How are you going to handle that? It's, they're they're going to tear you down. So you said that you kind of let it roll off your back. But how did you do that? How did you really kind of stay centered in who you are and keep moving forward until you did get those compliments from the casting directors? Right. Well, I would have to credit my, again, family, mom, dad, you know, those types of things for kind of instilling in me that it's like my worth and value as a human being right. comes not from <laughs> the work that I do and not from the acceptance that I get from casting directors and from agents, but my worth and value comes from, you know, uh, like me, who mm -hmm. I am, who, you know, and those are wildly different things, you know, who I am as a human being and as a, the things that are really important, like, um, like, having compassion for others mm -hmm. and kindness and love and, and those things are what really are important mm -hmm. and booking a gig eh. yeah you know and I so like approaching it from that way it does enable one to hopefully let some of that wash off it doesn't all wash no. off because i mean you know it's standing, it can sting a little <laughs> it bit it can sting yeah i remember being in an audition and 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 this was a casting director and she did say this and it was so mean but she's like oh my gosh you look like Gollum. <laughs> and, oh my and I was goodness. Like, yeah. And I looked at that and I chuckled and then I thought about it later and I was like I was like actually in the context of what she's doing and she was working with she had worked with some of the the Lord of the Rings stuff and everything and I was like, you know what? From where she's coming from, that's a huge compliment. So, I suppose. Yeah, like, you could be a double. I, I mean, in her the, eyes, the, the I think you look like Tom Hiddleston or Loki. I mean, personally. Which, thank you. That's so, a huge not compliment. Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Gollum. Ah, well, I don't have a ring. Oh, my precious. <laughs> yeah, and so that has served me really well in this industry Good. Is, 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 is knowing a little bit more about where your center comes from, mm -hmm. where your value comes from, because I think those are really important right. things. And then on top of that, like having casting directors respond to me well is so wonderful. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, I get what I'm... It started to really like define for me like who, what... Parts what's that your I would start to get. What's yeah. my market? How do I fit within this industry? And once I started to realize that, um, the agent started to too, because I started mm -hmm. to be able to present that right. to them. You know, with with headshots and with the work that I started to book. Nothing nothing speaks well to an agent as as much as booking work. Right. Like if you start making money, then an yeah. agent's like, I don't care what you look Make like. Make me more money. Make me some money. Yeah, I want a piece of that pie. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Which is wildly irritating oh, as yes. an actor to be you like... Want, you just want people to accept you and um, love you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Or to have an agent right. be like, not give you the time of day. And then mm -hmm. once you're... Then they're like, oh, oh. Now I like now you. Now I like you. Before <laughs> I didn't, but now I do. But it's a business too. So, right. you know, I, I totally can understand where mm -hmm. they're coming from. And yeah, yeah. Yeah. So uh, for myself, yeah, it was the, the big thing was was having casting directors mm -hmm. give me some of that stuff of and feedback. Um, that was actually, I think, way more beneficial to me right. um, than some of that stuff of we need to change you and turn yeah. you into something. Let's cut that, your hair and wear some contacts, okay? <laughs> yeah. But some of that too, like if you're an actor, you know, getting a haircut or yeah, something sometimes it revamps could be your like whole awesome. Yeah. It could be like you know. Sure. Like, like right now, I have Rock this the faux hawk. sort of faux hawk m mullet. <laughs> hey. But it was, you know, the film that I just did. Like, they right. were like, we are going to change and cut your hair. And, and again, this is probably because it's a lot easier for a guy. I'm like, do whatever you want. You want to shave it? Go for go it. For Whereas it. for you, I don't know. If you were... 
I would shave my head you for would? the right role. Okay. For for the right opportunity. I think it's a lot about being able to speak your heart and your mind and, and express something that's going to give back to others. So if it's the right project and it will speak to people, I'd shave my head. Yeah. Only for a good cause. Though. Only for a good cause. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so we kind of were talking about agents and casting directors, and though they can be wonderful, wonderful people, and they're really the only people that can propel your career forward if mm -hmm. you're looking to become professional. Right. Um, it starts with you, but I would say, in the yeah. end it is in their hands. So we want to say to you guys, they're not all bad. These stories we're talking about are not... <laughs> They're not standard. There are really wonderful industry <laughs> professionals to work with. But yeah, yeah I'm I, agreeing. Yeah. Yes, And there I are. think <laughs> a lot of aspiring actors are afraid of, one, those bullies, and two, the scams that you run into. Did you run into any scams when you started out? I think everybody does, and I think I still am coming across some of that. Um, mm -hmm. I think that that's... I think that's uh, <laughs> It's sad to say. I think it's like an industry standard. Yeah. I think that I think that the Every way that the industry is life. structured. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a de there's a definite way that um, that it kind of works together, uh, which that's where for myself the um, having spent a lot of time reading. Mm -hmm about the industry and how the progression happens and how that works together mm. serve me really well to avoid scams. Yeah. You know, like like knowing things like um, that when you have an agent that they will take a percentage of your earnings, mm -hmm. not the other way around. Like it's not right. like it's not like I'm going you don't to pay, them pay first. my agent. Right. Uh, you know, I mean I would be the one covering costs for simple things like Sure, I understand. Like, I'm going to be the one covering costs for mm -hmm. headshots. I get right. that. Or, you know, if an agency has a has a has a <laughs> my words are escaping me. If an agency has a website, mm -hmm. I can see you know giving them a little bit of money, nothing exorbitant, right. but just a little bit, so that they can be like, okay, we need to cover our costs of like because we have to have a web Marketing, programmer, right? Like, put your into our system. I get like some of that, mm -hmm. um, but I don't understand like paying for if if an agent's going to rep me. It's like. No, I shouldn't be paying you a monthly salary. Right. Mm -mm, that would be a scam. Where right. It's like, no, I, mm -hmm. I, I want to be making money, and an agent should only be making money when they're mm -hmm. when I'm making money. You know. Right. And I think that the, at, at the moment, the like SAG agents, you know, the union agents, um, I want to say it's ten percent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe it, it's ten percent, and up to twenty. I th yeah, and I think that I think the union agents are governed by. I think it's. I think they can't do more than ten. Oh, okay. So when you submit to roles, um, is it always your agent now, or do you still proactively search for your own? If I waited for my agent to do all of that, I would get work <laughs> here and there. Yeah. Yeah. But. Um, and I hear this a lot too. People are like, "Wow, you're always working." And it's like, "Yes, I am always working because I'm always working." Right. Like, um, so the answer is no. I'm I'm actively actively out there, you know, submitting myself for roles or talking to people or mm -hmm. you know, a lot of the roles that have happened for me this year um, ca came from um, you know talking to this person that knew this person that, mm -hmm. you know, was aware that I would fit well for this part. So a lot of networking. A lot of networking. Mm -hmm. A lot of networking, a lot of, um, yeah, like the, 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 at the first of the year I worked on a film called Anniversary. Mm -hmm. And the way that it happened was the director of the movie, Jim Cole, he actually came to Minnesota. He's from Maine. Okay. And he came to Minnesota, you know, a few years back, and he, that was when he was working as a cinematographer. And he and I met on set. Oh, okay. And and I worked with him on this film, and you know, and he's just behind the camera the whole time. And uh, we kind of were like, I was like, I really dig this director, mm -hmm. this this cinematographer. And 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 I I could tell that the feeling was mutual. He's like, wow, I, I like Paul. Um, and so we we just kind of were like, wow, we get along. That's great. Right. You know, if we ever have the opportunity to work together, it would be great. Yeah. You know. And fast forward a few years later, I get he contacts me and he's like, hey. I am directing, I'm doing this movie, mm -hmm. a feature here in Maine, and I would love it if you would consider this part. Mm -hmm. and, and what I love is that he didn't just give me the part, he actually had me audition for it. And so, you know, I, I you know, got my, I, I think I just was like, you know, holding my phone and like auditioning. And 
sent them the audition and he actually sent me back some notes. He's like, you know, oh, could you, you try this? this? Yeah. Could you try this? You know, and, and that's the downfall a little bit of not being able to be in the same room mm -hmm. with oh, the absolutely. directors because then you, you, know, you have to redo it. Uh, and, and so I'm back there, you know, re-recording it and, and I sent it out to them and then, and then they were like, perfect, you got it. We're going to cast you. You know, that's amazing. Clear your schedule. And that's how that happened. And then so I was in Maine for five months shooting wow. a movie, which is a long time. And it was awesome and fun. And that's how that happened. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's not like it's not like the my agent was like, hey, mm -hmm. I've got this movie for you to read for, which that happens, too. But right. Um, yeah. So there's there's just there's a lot of different ways that mm -hmm. happens. And I'm starting to notice that a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and it's good, it's good. It's not that it falls in your lap, but you're constantly working and mm -hmm. representing yourself, always yeah. moving forward. And then it, it, it kind of does fall in your lap, like, mm -hmm. oh, okay, yeah. I did this right, and now this is coming back to me. So yeah. that's excellent. Well, you kind of piqued my interest now, and then earlier you were talking about your, your fancy mullet you've got. So my <laughs> fancy mullet, yeah. What compelled you to have a mullet, and why was it part of your character's identity, and for what film was that? This, this hairdo was not for anniversary. Okay. Anniversary in Maine. Um, I, I, listening audience, I, I've shot uh, two films this year. And the first one was Anniversary, mm -hmm. and we wrapped in, in May. And for that one, I had like a really basic like comb over. Like it almost looked <laughs> like I had a comb over. Um, Beautiful. <laughs> which was great. And this hairdo is for, I just got back from LA. Actually, I shot a film there called Imperfect Sky. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I flew out there and the wardrobe department and stuff, we were going over my wardrobe and one of the hairstylists was like, hmm, hmm, hmm. And they were like, what are you opposed to for, you know, what can we not do to your hair? And I was like, you can do whatever you yeah. want. So they started cutting and they kind of came up with this faux hawkish. Yeah, it's very fresh, very new. Very, I think it's all the rage. I think it's all the rage, yeah. <laughs> How do you get into character? Um, each, each role is a little bit different. Um, I mean, my kind of approach to them, it, each character requires a different thing. And mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of like studying and, you know, a lot of that stuff that you don't ever really see per se on camera, you know, like, uh, like the character that has this hairdo. Yeah. Um, he has some involvement with drugs and things like that. So, you know, like watching, um, videos on YouTube and internet and, and just all that stuff to see because I don't I, I've never done some of that stuff so I'm right. just like what does this mean you know so there's some of that and then also like you said like mm -hmm. uh, wardrobe I think for me is probably the biggest thing that kind of informs a Your character mind. right because um, there's there's certain things you wear and it's just like okay if I wear you know, this this armor or whatever, uh, it forces your body to move a certain way, mm -hmm. you know, and so that, that helps inform the character. Um, and also, you know, if you have a hairdo like this, you're, it, it <laughs> you gotta kind of wear it. Right, stuff. changes your self yeah. per perception, mm -hmm. so to speak. And how other people see you too, it's interesting, right. so, um, yeah. Very cool, and so your preparation changes with every role. Would you say you kind of, stick to the same theme, the same way of preparing for each character, or does it change each time? Well, and, and the, at the core, like the core of what I do, which I think every actor does, I don't think that this makes me unique, is, you know, is learn the lines. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, memorize those lines. Um, and then after that, yeah, the, the layers of different things mm -hmm. and... and there's certain lines like in Imperfect Sky that I came across where I was like, okay, what does that mean? It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, like I thought like there was a reference to um, a drug and I, and I thought it was a totally different one. So I had to do some research and I was like, oh, that's not a, that's not like a street drug. That's a drug that w a doctor would prescribe. Okay. And that is a healthier thing. And then I was like, oh, that changes the line, how I deliver it because right. it's a, uh, you know, it just, just different mm -hmm. things like that where it's like, okay, so learn the lines and go from there. Know your character, know yeah. your environment. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. If my character is saying a word, I better understand what that word means. Exactly. Um, or if I don't understand it, then that informs like how I would deliver it. Mm -hmm. So. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Cool. So would you say, th I mean, it's not just about memorizing your lines, right? It's It's more than that. It's listening to your... 
um, on-screen partner. It's yep. kind of forming those thoughts. How do you memorize those lines and then effectively forget them so that you're <laughs> not just robotic? Oh, for myself, if I don't know the lines, like mm -hmm. I've, I've worked with actors that they, they kind of know the lines and they kind of don't and they just like it to be really you know, off the cuff. Off the cuff, and I'm just like, wow, like I can't. I need my do cue. That. Like I need, <laughs> yeah, I need the cue line. Um, prima donna. I need <laughs> the prima, yeah, with my bowl of M and M's. <laughs> I need the line. I need to know the lines well enough so that I can play. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, as an actor, I don't feel comfortable if I don't know the lines well enough. Where I'm like, okay, that's my cue line. I need to say my line. You know, because like, right. then I just I get all up cerebral mm -hmm. in my head, and if I know the lines backwards and forwards, which I try to do, I haven't. Mm -hmm. I, I don't do it all the time, but then I can play and then right. that's when it's fun and that's when it's like okay I don't have to I don't have to worry about remembering these I can then be super in present the in this moment of like okay mm -hmm. what it what is you know if you and I were acting right now I'd be like okay what is this moment what is this feeling what is mm -hmm. she giving me what am I you know giving this back. world we exist in mm -hmm. um, you know the sci-fi world you know <laughs> like <laughs> you know what is that and and being really open to that like mm -hmm. that to me is the most exciting ever is is when i've done all the preparation and then to you know like you said to be vulnerable to like let that go and then mm -hmm. to just exist yeah. and i can't do that if i don't you know memorize the lines and mm -hmm. know some of that so yeah. yeah all right i'm gonna i actually brought some yeah. books and i'm gonna show them to share you. them please um because i think and these are your personal favorites <laughs> these are my personal favorites okay. yes uh this one aspiring actors breaking into acting for dummies when i first saw this at the library <laughs> i was like perfect i was like that's ridiculous that that can't have any good information and, and it <laughs> does it is it is everybody that is like you know trying to get into acting they're like Paul you know tell me about this and I'm like read Actors this book could, yeah. it talks about you know headshots it talks about uh, resources it talks about scams all that stuff so I love this book super cool um, and for people that are in the Twin Cities uh, this is actually written by a local actor oh really Beth Chaplin yeah okay. um, and what I love about this is you know as you can see it's the acting biz, but it's a career guide to the Twin Cities specifically. Very specific, So, yeah. breaking into acting for dummies is a kind of overall mm -hmm. view of the industry, you know, like New York and L.A. and Chicago and right. just everywhere. This is specific to mm -hmm. locally. And, and every market is different, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, every market is has its own little quirks and things like that. With, like, those underlying uh, consistencies, you know. Right. Every market has agents. Every market has a casting mm -hmm. director, you know, all that stuff. This I would highly recommend for people that are here with us okay. in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Minnesota, you know, the Twin Cities. Um, those are like, they cover really well the business okay. side of acting. Um, and the, the, the other book that I love that isn't so much about the business, but is more about like how to act. Okay, I love that man. Michael Caine. He is the best. Film. The best. Yeah. So these, uh, I, I would tell people to start with these. Okay. And the thing I like about Michael Caine's book is that he does talk about like the business side of it, but most of it is about like, okay, there's Creating a camera that. right in front of you. Like, how do you, okay, when you're when we're acting in mm -hmm. the scene, you know, don't look right in the camera. You know, yeah. just different things like that. So that's brilliant. So those yeah. those would be three things that I would say people should look at if they're kind of st wanting to start right. and wanting to get their feet wet with reading. Right, I, and I love that there are three different aspects. Yeah. You know, we've got the creative with Michael Caine. We've got specific Twin Cities for our local community. Mm -hmm. And then we have Acting for Dummies, which is <laughs> the best. Because when you start out, you do feel kind of like a dummy. Like, yeah. who are these people? Who are these agents and these casting directors? And what does this all mean? Right. Do you have any insight right. on that for us? I do, actually. Well, and and this kind of stems into my past because... Uh, when I one of the first things that I did out of high school was mm -hmm. I interned at a casting director's office. And oh, excellent! That yeah. would give you some really solid insight. I got some very good insight into into the industry, and it's one of those things where working within the uh, the cogs and, mm -hmm. and seeing how everything works and churns and stuff, it gave me a really good understanding of 
who is who, mm -hmm. for one. And then it also gave me a lot of confidence in knowing how I fit into mm -hmm. this big, huge watch, mm -hmm. <laughs> ticking watch that is the entertainment industry. Um, yeah, and, and, and there's, there's so many different parts to it, too. I mean, um, I know a lot of, uh, when I was first starting out, the reading and education was huge because it really solidified in my mind who is who, you know, yeah. what an agent is and how sh an agent is different than a casting director mm -hmm. and how a casting director is different than an actual director mm -hmm. right. um, and things like that. Mm -hmm. And it's so terrible. My phone is ringing. <laughs> hey, it might be an audition. You <laughs> it might be an audition. This. Wait, hold on. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, and I actually, I wanted to sketch these out because... Yeah, I would love that. Um, and you probably know some of these. No. Because you, yeah, no, <laughs> we'll do this like you're, like you have no idea. Um, the biggest differentiation for like somebody that's starting out in acting is the difference between a casting director and mm -hmm. an agent and like what the job is that they actually do. Um, and people ask me this a lot, so I always, I'm like, let me sketch this for you. Uh, let's use it as an example, like, mm -hmm. um, this could be for a commercial or for like a film, let's, let's say it's a film. Okay. Uh, a production company like, I don't know, Paramount or whoever mm -hmm. is going to make a film and they will hire a director um, and they will also hire a casting director and again, this is like a big differentiation that I've always right. had to like pay attention to because mm -hmm. You hear so often about like, oh, the casting couch and like just different things like that. And it's like, what the heck is the casting couch? <laughs> you don't know what the casting I couch is? I don't know what the casting couch um, is. The casting couch would be something like where you would do, you know, where people are like, oh, I'll let you read for this part if you do something for me. And oh, gotcha. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. yeah. And it's like, again, it's that thing where it's like, no, you, you actually don't have to do anything other mm -hmm. than act. Right. to get a part in acting, or mm -hmm. you shouldn't have to, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? And if you do start to run into that casting Has couch... Has anyone ever said that to you, Paul? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, would, I would chuckle and laugh, and yeah, that I don't know. That would be the best. <laughs> um, so, uh, the director is different than the casting director. Then, after the casting director, in this, like, this is kind of like a hierarchy right. of, like, you know, who's at the top and who's at the bottom. And it's I funny. Like that. Yeah, and you'll have agents. Agents are down here. And then under yes, agents, you'll actor. have actors. <laughs> and it always makes me chuckle because it's like, who's at the bottom? Yeah. <laughs> you know, and this is, this is for people that are starting out or mm -hmm. just getting started. This, obviously, if you're Brad Pitt or Angelina Jolie, you're you going to be way say. up here. Right. Like, you know, you might even be the director. Um, and it's okay to be the little guy. It is. It's okay to start there. I love that you it, said that. And the reason is because there's so many actors that I've come across and talked to where they're like, oh, I don't have anything. I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not doing what you're doing, Paul, or I'm not doing what, you know, Brad Pitt's doing mm -hmm. or something. And I'm like, but yeah, but Brad Pitt started somewhere. Right. And I started somewhere. And can't we just be proud of that? Right. Like, how exciting is it that you can become an actor mm -hmm. and you're bringing something fresh and new? Right. Even if it's a student film or just a small commercial or a print ad, yeah. that's a start. That's oh, it a totally, solid start. It totally is. Um, and, and so we're, but we're casting this movie. Mm -hmm. And the production company calls the casting director mm -hmm. and... We're looking for a woman who has blonde hair down to about here. Um, she has to wear, you know, really yes. high boots. <laughs> and uh, we need to see 20 people, yeah. you know, or we want to see 20 people for the role. The casting director is going to then call agents, not mm -hmm. just one. They'll probably call several agents. Each of those agents is going to call several actor, mm -hmm. actresses. Actors. Um, so you're going to get a phone call from the, cast, from the agent. And you're not the only one that's getting called. You know, mm -hmm. a casting director for one role will probably see, depending upon how big the part is, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've auditioned for roles where it's like, I'm auditioning up against like 200 other guys. You know, and they're all, you know, have similar colored hair and similar colorings or, you know, and it's just like, it's like, wow, that's daunting. Um, yeah, it is a little scary. It's a little scary and it's a little bit like, wow, oh, okay, you know. But what's what's interesting about that is is once once I started working in the casting office mm -hmm. and started to see that process happening, it was like oh, oh well then I didn't get cast, 
Well, I was up against 300 other people. Mm -hmm. Of course I didn't get cast. Like, I can't book every single job I exactly. auditioned for. There's mm -hmm. 300 people I'm up against every single time. Like, that started to make me a better mm -hmm. actor because I was like, I... It takes the pressure out of it. It takes a lot of the mm -hmm. pressure out of it. It takes, uh, you know, just, just realizing what that process is. Mm -hmm. um, and also realizing, too, like, you know, the agent isn't the one that's getting me the job. Mm -hmm. they, you know, they're getting me connected to the casting director. Mm -hmm. um, and then the casting director, again, is somebody that uh, they should be in your in your corner. Uh, in your corner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, but they're not the one that's booking you for the job either. Right. It is the director. Mm -hmm. The director is the one that has the final say in who they are going to book for the project. Mm -hmm. So. I mean, I've had some experiences along the way where, you know, the casting director wasn't in love with me, but the director was, or, right. you know, just different things. And it's just like, it's such a weird process of booking a project mm -hmm. and getting work. And I think it once is. you realize that, it's, it hopefully takes some of that pressure off, mm -hmm. some of that anxiety of like, why, dear <laughs> God, did they not cast me? I tried me? so hard. <laughs> yeah. And it might come down to the fact that, you know, Sam, your eyes are too light of blue. We actually need... Uh -huh. You know, this woman over here, exactly. Matilda, you know, she has brown eyes and that's what we want. It's a lot of different things. I think some of the time, well, all of the time, what it comes down to is, are you right for the role? And it's not about your ability. It's not about your knowledge sometimes. It's, it's not about your experience. They're looking for that person that can bring their character to life. So all the pressure's off. You just go in and be you. <laughs> That's really all you gotta do. Yeah. Be Paul Cram. That's be all. Be Paul Cram. Or be Paul Cram playing, uh, yes. playing of course, the as part. The, or... As the part. But... Yeah, yeah. So this is a lot to take in. And I'm thinking something kind of crazy. And you know what? I'm thinking that your kind of crazy is my kind of crazy. Yeah. I think we should do it. I think that we should too. I totally think we should too. Um, she's got to answer. Is she there? She's totally got to answer. I gotta say, this is super unprofessional. Hang on one second. Hello? Hello? Mr. Agent Man, yes. how are you? Yes, Sam, hey, I've got an audition for you. You do? Tomorrow, are you available? <gasps> you better be available. You know what, yes. Yes, yes I am. Yes, you are. Well, here's what I'm gonna do, Sam. I'm going to email you the sides Sides is a fancy word for the script. Mm -hmm. Awesome. <laughs> and you need to email me back that you got these sides, okay? I will. I will read it and I will email you back as soon as I can. Awesome. And, you know, you don't actually have to have the lines memorized for this particular okay. read, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So do I need to wear any specific... Um, is there like a wardrobe or any direction? Yeah, you, you need to me? wear boots that go up to your knees and okay. you have to wear a black coat. Okay, I, I've got just the thing. <laughs> All right, I'll send it over. Bye. All right, thank you. <laughs> Let's do this. Let's do it. <laughs>、Um, Hello. I'm here for the 12:45.、Um, excellent. You said 12:45. There you are. I'm actually going to have you take that. That's、okay. your number. And yep, 312. Fill these out. Are there 312 people here? Yes. Well, we've seen so far your number. Well, we've seen 311. Anyways,、uh, fill that out. Get it back、okay. to me. Here is the sides. Thank you.、Um, you've seen these already. Yes. Yes, okay.、Um, and you know what? I'm actually going to have you,、uh, once you fill it out, take that and、okay. you're going to actually give that to the casting、okay. director. Yeah.、Okay. And I'll snap your picture in a second, but、um, fill that all out. I'll snap your picture and then I'm going to call your name when we're ready. Thank you. Mm hmm. Any conflicts I have for yep. Okay. Yep, and actually, I'm just going to do the photo right here. Just smile for me. This is just for the form, you know what I mean? Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah, list any conflicts、okay. that you might have. All righty. Hi. Hello. Samantha. Samantha, okay.
Gotcha. Shot, resume. Uh, and these are all the dates that, yep, okay. Got that, good. Um, I'm gonna be reading for Jack. You can be Rose, obviously. Okay. And first things first, I'm just gonna get oh, your sweet. slate. All righty, we're rolling, so. Samantha Raymeyer. And give me a profile to the left and profile to the right. Excellent, back to front, okay. All right, um, and you don't have to deliver lines right to the camera, just deliver them to me sure. and, and that's good. This is what people are using for the door, but I mean, some people haven't really been using it, so you can either, you can choose as the actor, whatever you wanna do. Okay, okay? definitely not room for two on here. No, there's <laughs> not, okay. Um, oh, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, okay. <laughs> And you have the first line, and we're rolling, so whenever you're ready. I love you, Jack. No, don't say your goodbyes, Rose. Don't give up. Don't give up. I'm so cold. You're going to get out of this. You're going to go on, and you're going to have a lot of babies and watch them grow, and you're going to die an old lady warm in your bed, not here, not this night. Do you understand me? I can't feel my body. You must do me this honor. Promise me you will survive that you will never give up, no matter what happens, no matter how hopeless. Promise me now, and never let go of that promise. I promise. Never let go. I promise I will never let go, Jack. I'll never let go. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good day. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, that was fun. <laughs> that was fun. I think you're going to book it. I don't know. What if I don't? <laughs> Uh, well, what if you don't? I'll cry. <laughs> I've done that. I've totally done that when I, if I don't get a part or something like that. Um, yeah. It yeah. can hurt a lot. And you put yourself out there. It's very vulnerable. It is very vulnerable. But even going back to kind of like some of the stuff that we've talked about, like mm -hmm. um, I know for myself, like if I don't book a part, um, like I remind myself of those things, like who was I reading against? Like there's right. a few hundred people maybe. And like, it doesn't necessarily mean, I always just tell myself this so that I'm not always crying myself to sleep at night. Uh, uh. <laughs> um, is that, is that, uh, I d doesn't, just because I didn't book it doesn't mm -hmm. mean that I didn't do well. Yeah. And the audition process is such a huge part, it's mm -hmm. such a big chunk of acting that you kind of have to, or at least for me, like, kind of have to, like, if I don't enjoy this process, mm -hmm. I better go into a different field. Yeah. Or learn how to enjoy <laughs> or, it. Or learn how to enjoy mm -hmm. it, which is kind of, which is kind of the point. Yeah, yeah like, definitely. Um, because, you know, for myself too, like, uh, and, and this is not just me, but everybody is, um, the casting director, you know, when I was the casting director, like, I just saw you audition. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, you might not book that specific part, um, but I just saw you audition. Yeah. You were just in front of me. And I might think of, like, huh, you know what? Sam would be so good. That one audition, she was so good reading that part, sitting on that door. Yeah, and that's happened to you, right? You that know? has happened to me, yeah. yes. I actually, there was a film in L.A. I auditioned for it, and the director in the casting session was like, that was terrible. Oh. I can't believe how awful that was. And the casting director turned to him and said, no, that was really good, Paul. Thank you so much for coming in. And two days later, she called me, and she's like, hey, I've got this other movie you'd be much better fit for. And I auditioned and booked it, and I flew mm -hmm. to Florida and shot it. And it yeah. was like, oh, I'm not just auditioning for this director that doesn't mm -hmm. like me. It's like, oh, there's a bigger picture, yeah. you know, and, and kind of building up that momentum as a part of that, you know. Mm -hmm. I auditioned for this casting director once, and then twice, and then three, and it's like, oh, and then you start to build a rapport, and then mm -hmm. it's like, oh, this is a part of the process. Right. Yeah, and I didn't book everything, but that, like I like to think of it as a bigger picture, like not just not just every little part, yeah. but it's like no uh, overall, and that makes it so much easier to handle. It's mm -hmm. like well, I didn't book that one, but I'm still that's part still of the working. process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, what do you do when it seems like the well has all dried up and <laughs> there's no calls coming in? You're not going out on auditions. You can't find them. What do you do? Oh gosh, I. Well, I haven't particularly done this, but I know a lot of actors that have, if they, when the well runs dry, they actually create their own work. Okay. You know, they'll, they'll write something, they'll 
they'll get something off the ground, mm -hmm. and I love that. Yeah, um, it's a great way to keep yourself that's sharp. So good, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, when I started, was starting to get my start, and I still do this. I work for free. Yeah. Like not every time that I'm working, do I need to work for money? So if if if, if it's if it's really dry and it's like, yeah. wow, this is like there's a nothing. desert. There's nothing. Um, I might be like, gosh, I have some time. I'm mm -hmm. going to, I'm going to go to the local film schools and mm -hmm. I'm going to volunteer to work with the film school directors mm -hmm. and I'm going to stay current with that. Right. I'm going to, you know, I'll look at Craigslist. I'll, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Those different things where yeah. it's like, where can I find work that I could even volunteer for? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really important to stay sharp. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, absolutely. Yeah, and 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 I and this year has been really great for me as far as projects go and work goes. You know, mm -hmm. shooting two films. You know, one and they're yeah. basically on both coasts, um, and having a movie come out. But um, the the lead up to that, there's been years where I'm working on student projects, student mm -hmm. projects, student projects, getting myself out there, getting myself out there. And none of it's like big paid work. None mm -hmm. of it's, you know, those projects. But it's something. But it's something. And I love to, I have to give a shout out to like the film student directors oh, out absolutely. there because I have worked on so many of their projects. And those are the projects where me as an actor, I've been able to play parts I would never right. ever play. The fifty-year-old man. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, you you do that like in theater, but not in film. You know, right. usually in film, it's like so specific. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, this and you is can be character. the. We need you to be the eighty-year-old woman, Sam. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, rock on. Sure. Um, and and casting me in genres that I don't usually mm -hmm. get cast in. You know, it's in it's in those experimental like films that where they're learning and I'm learning, and it's so great because yeah. there isn't the pressure of like. Here's you're you're working for a paycheck. Yeah. Like you need you to be deliver. on. You better deliver. Yeah, and it's like okay, like yeah. I, you can experiment and have fun and learn and grow and get stuff for your mm -hmm. reel, and you can mm -hmm. then it's that thing that just that wheel that starts spinning, yeah. and then hopefully it takes you where you want to go. Yeah, and I would Network. I would echo that. You know, mm -hmm. um, just from my own experience, like. You know, when I first started out, it wasn't all roses and, and no. You know, <laughs> you know, just there was a challenge to it and. Um, I think the biggest thing that you know I would tell aspiring actors out there is uh, there is a, there is space for you. There's mm -hmm. room for you, you know, within this industry, um, regardless of if you're tall, skinny, mm -hmm. fat, short, you know, whatever you look like. If if you can approach this like a business and and be professional mm -hmm. and and bring something fresh and new to it, there's space for you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm, and I'm saying that from some of my experiences, you know, when I was first starting out where people were like, you know, you need to change your physical build, you need to yeah. be bigger, you need to be, you know, this, that, or the other thing. And it's just like, it's like, well, I could make some of those changes, mm -hmm. absolutely. You know, you could cut your hair, you know, right. simple changes like that. But there's certain things you can't change, those mm -hmm. core things of who you are, you know. Exactly. I'm a pretty, you know, I can't change how tall I am unless I'm in shoes or, you know what I mean, or mm -hmm. slouch. But, um, and then also I would say just to remember... Um, remember that booking a job or the work that you do doesn't really define like who you are like those yeah. core things that make you valuable and important and a human being those matter mm -hmm. this is work mm -hmm. and that's another thing too that that has been really beneficial to myself handling rejection because mm -hmm. it's like okay you don't want me to be in your commercial does that change my worth and value right. as a human being? And you've heard no. some pretty mean things in yeah. <laughs> auditions. And yeah, people so. get really mean mm -hmm. and, and snarky. And, and I understand where some of that comes from, too. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're working as a casting director and you've seen 400 people in one day, mm -hmm. you know, one every five minutes, and, you know, I can imagine the kind of pressure that that builds. And then if things are going wrong and things right. are going wrong, I mean... The things that come out of people's mouths, it's like, whoa, you just said that? Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of times, you know, it's people get uh, busy and pressure and things come out funky. Yeah, we're all human. And so if for me as an actor to be like, wow, that person just said I look like Gollum. Like, oh, my gosh, that's so terrible. And it was. Oh. <laughs> but taking a step back and being like, wow, that doesn't necessarily, that she's commenting on, like, a physicality of mm -hmm. me. That's not who and you are as a person. A I don't think you look like Gollum. You look like <laughs> Tom Hiddleston to me. Thank you. You look like Loki. So. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would say. Yeah. Cool. 
<laughs> well, thank you so much, Paul. I think we learned a lot here today. And I think if you are watching, you have learned some really awesome, valuable things from Paul. And be sure to check out these books. Don't forget about those. Yeah, and thanks so, for having me. Yeah. See you guys. So have you ever wanted to be Rose?